developing high-performing teams is one of the leader's most important responsibilities. In this video, we'll discuss the foundational skills and attributes that a leader must cultivate to ensure a team is working well to deliver on its mission. We've all been on a team at some point. Maybe you were on one yesterday or earlier this week. Take a moment to think about these three questions. Recall a time when you were on an amazing team, working with a group of people, whether it be at work, at school, in a social or community setting, sports, or anything else. What did it look like? How did it make you feel? What were those attributes that made it a great team to be a part of? Think about the leader of that team. Remember that the leader does not need to have a formal title or position or the person with the most authority. But what did the leader do to make you feel the way you did? Conversely, you could also think about this in terms of a team that did not work well together. If it was a poorly led team, why? What contributed to the issues that made it not as successful as it could have been? Now think about your own team or work group. Do they all work well together? If so, how? And if not, why? As we progress through this video, consider how you could implement just one small thing that we can help to make your team or work group better. Dr. Daniel Levy, author of Group Dynamics for Teams, defines team as a special type of group in which People work interdependently to accomplish a goal. Teams are essential and a work unit in our world today. But we need to focus on two key things. First, they are bound by a common purpose or goal. And second, they have a dependence upon each other to ensure that they are successful. In short, we can't operate alone. While we each bring our own unique perspective, experience, skills, as a team, we work better together. We have the capacity to bring forth more than we could on our own. Recognizing that a team has a common mission, purpose, and expectation is one of the key drivers to the team leadership process. This chart, taken from an excellent research article, describing the effectiveness of teams shows the role of a leader in identifying key aspects of teamwork. First, the leader helps drive the vision, the ultimate future state of the project, and uses leadership processes to ensure that the appropriate information is identified and shared, as well as ensuring proper resources are available. There are four processes that then go to the overall effectiveness of the team. These are the cognitive or knowledge needed, the motivation or attitude, the emotional connection or the affective domain, and the coordination or collaboration. Being transparent and open to discuss these four processes can go a long way to ensure the team is well positioned for overall success. Answering the questions about purpose, mission, goals, and objectives ensures that we are all on the same page about team achievement. Forming a team is all about bringing people together. Whether you are forming a team from scratch or inheriting a team from someone else, every team must form itself and sometimes reform itself over time. Leaders should think about team formation. Again, whether from nothing or that the piece is already assembled, as an invitation. To invite someone is to request their presence or participation according to Merriam-Webster's dictionary. We want to extend a request to them formally and urge them to contribute, asking them questions. 
will help ensure that they are con uh, committed and any hesitations or concerns can be addressed. The leader can also address them on the spot or over time. Again, many of the four processes we saw a moment ago exactly go to the invitation process. Let's review some of the key roles a team leader plays. They provide the overarching vision, goal, and facilitate the guiding principles to ensure the team is on track for success. They help answer questions, probe and elicit concerns when things are muddy. They recruit talent, develop those members, and integrate them into the work and the group norms. They provide support and assistance, including soothing nerves or easing any issues that the team or individual members have. As a facilitator, they bring the team together and provide the knowledge, information, or resources to enable the work to be done. Building trust through constructive resolution, stability, objectivity, and confidence building is an essential role a leader plays. Finally, the leader is the ambassador to the group and the external liaison to obtain additional time, money, information, and resources the team needs. It cannot be underscored enough that anyone can be a leader. Again, no formal role, title, or authority is needed to do any of these things. We need to develop the leadership level of each person on the team, especially to ensure continuity and stability over time. Building strong team is a multifaceted process. The leader is responsible for the overall process and structure of the team. On one hand, the foundation of a team is based on both the need and the desire to build up and develop the skills of each individual, those interdependencies of the team members. The team must also balance leveraging the experience, wisdom, unique perspectives, and capacity that together enhances the overall ability of the team to perform. The leader must, must be skilled and competent, but possess the humility and respect for others to ensure they do not dominate or overshadow the work being done. While they are in a position of privilege for many things, they must not let that override the basic style of being a good leader of others through communication, listening, and perspective taking. Likewise, the leader needs to balance the needs of the team along with the individual members' needs. This is especially critical for supervisors. We must be caring and supportive while also ensuring the work is accomplished according to the schedule, resources, and expectations of our stakeholders. We'll talk about trust more in a moment, but trust is critical for an effective team. The leader must help build and maintain the positive morale of the team, providing the necessary tools, processes, structure, and systems needed to get the work done effectively and efficiently, and ensure that the resource needs are communicated and distributed. Team leaders are important in setting the direction, clarifying the roles, providing timely feedback, both positive and corrective, and ensuring that the role, the continued positive direction of the team. This means building the support and collaboration. No doubt a team leader has a lot to juggle, but it is essential to ensuring a great foundation. The leader's main job is to build trust. Trust doesn't happen overnight. Trust, as Dr. Daniel Levi describes it, is the expression of a confidence in relationship that the other team members will honor their commitments. 
we must model trustworthiness as both teammates and as leaders. We must model trustworthiness both as teammates and as leaders. This includes seeing the team as a partnership, a collaborative effort, and holding each of us, including ourselves, accountable. It also is about building the personal credibility incrementally and over time. Trust is not delivered, but must be intentionally sought, developed, and earned. By keeping our promises, asking for feedback on how we can improve, and having a positive, can-do attitude while being agile helps. Common bonds are forged through spending time together, even virtually. Over time, we must be slowly and intentionally working towards building that trust. Being open and honest is another important piece of this process. Nelson Mandela said, if you talk to a man in a language he understands, that goes to his head. If you talk to him in his language, that goes to his heart. Here, he is talking about forming a team by intently listening and hearing the other person, and then responding in words that they use. Be intentional about the words, phrasing, and tone. This is part of our emotional intelligence. Team building is about the use of emotional intelligence and effective communication strategy. Being a good active listener, seeking to invite and welcome people into the team process, and leading as a servant is an excellent approach to building an effective team. Let's turn to building a team. Not just that the team has been formed, but how we can make it the most effective, responsive, and useful team it can be. We must recognize that, like the formation phase, the building phase will take time, effort, and intentionality. The old saying, Rome wasn't built in a day, is so true. Team building takes dedicated time and energy so that we can do it to correctly and for the right reasons. Teamwork can be described into formats. First, the results or visible product produced by the team's efforts. This is the destination or end state of the journey. The second, the process, knowledge, and structures created, identified, or learned along the way. We want to focus on both because these are important. The people and the processes are the most critical because we must pay attention to those. When we do, everything else will be in focus as well. As a team member, and frankly as a team leader, it is important to know the goal or vision of the team, but also be able to articulate it. Remember, the vision is the destination or end state. Vision is the responsibility of the leader. It is not that the leader dictates each word of the vision, but rather should facilitate the discussion about where the team is going and why they need to get there. Leaders must also listen so that they know what is being said and where potential barriers or challenges may be, especially as the team works to communicate the vision back. Execution is the responsibility of the team. They must own how they execute the vision. Using the action assessment to help everyone, especially the leader, get on the same page. They serve as a reminder to align the team's vision to the mission, being clear on the expectation, building trust within the group, and cultivating initiative creativity, and critical thinking. Understanding the organizational and environmental context, as well as establishing norms and processes.
As the work continues and the team evolves and works together, it is helpful to think about the long term. This includes building in processes and information, just as we did in the action previously discussed, when establishing a team. Remember that teams and leaders adapt, evolve, listen, and consider how they can make changes. Teaming development includes three issues as the team continues along. First, we want to include and orient new members. That includes bringing them fully on board by integrating them and building the trust, and finally ensuring that they are aware of the expectations. Their contributions will be as important, if not more so, to ensure the continuity and future success of the team. It is essential to get them in a positive place going forward. Much like a baseball team or any sports team or organized group, teams rely on several elements that make for success. It does not guarantee success, but will help position the team and its members to take on any challenge, learn, grow, and come together. Teams are on the same page because they share a common language and values. They encourage socialization, interaction, and discuss the processes that look for improvements, best practices, and potential impediments to success. The group also shares information with each other, especially about their backgrounds and interests, to continually build rapport and trust with each other. Finally, they utilize symbols, rituals, ceremonies, and celebrate their individual and team accomplishments. They are also supportive of each other when things don't go as planned. The leader's main job is to set the conditions and elements for the team to be successful, to support and encourage their team, and to ensure that they are best positioned to accomplish the mission and vision. Patrick Lencioni has written an excellent book called The Five Dysfunctions of a Team. In it, he lays out the five areas where teams fall down. As we've discussed earlier, trust is the first and most important fundamental dysfunction, or the lack thereof. Luckily, Lencioni also provides an antidote to each of the five problems. These are critical for leaders to remember, especially as they come into a team that has been operating for a while, or a team that is being newly established. Teams must first start by working on the base of the pyramid or the trust. If trust is not there, the entire team will fall apart. Trust is developed over time and based on mutual respect, genuine discussion, and psychological safety, especially when there's dissension or bad news. This is not a falsely harmonious or facade of trust where everyone's holding hands and singing kumbaya but is a real and true mutual respect. The lack of tr trust is often rooted in the ability of the leader to model their own vulnerability. Vulnerability by the leader opens the door for others as well. Vulnerability is not a weakness, but an expression of confidence because they are aware of their limitations and biases. Another component that inhibits accountability is the next phase of the pyramid, fear of conflict. Conflict, in his model, allows for the unfiltered, open discussion of ideas, not personalities. Conflict, like trust, is essential to an open airing of issues, not personal attacks or dislike. Commitment is formed through dialogue, both listening and learning to ensure leaders and followers understand the context, mission, and issues. Accountability, both personal and team, are critical. The old adage, what is good for the goose is good for the gander, applies here. Finally, teams must pay attention to the results. By delivering on their commitments and executing the vision of the team, serving the stakeholders and those who rely on the mission, teams will be well-grounded to execute their roles.
A Welsh proverb says that those who want to be leaders must be a bridge. Merriam-Webster defines bridge as a structure carrying a pathway or roadway over, like a low-lying area, obstacle, or body of water that can't be easily traversed. A bridge spans two separate places that need to be connected. Like Peter Drucker says, a leader bridges two diverse places, the present and the future. By rising above the water, it brings elevated perspective and enables people to move freely from now to next. Leaders of teams galvanize their members to go beyond their current abilities and build them up to better and better outcomes.